The name of the movie is Sex Mission. In 1991, a professor confirms that his hibernation experiment is a success after waking up a chimpanzee who hibernated for six months. The next step is to experiment on humans, so Albert and Max volunteer. Albert is a biologist who wants to be part of humanity's advances, while Max wants some adventure and to spend some time away from his wife and daughter, who are furious with him for abandoning them. During the press conference, the professor explains that the duo will be hibernating for three years and that there may be some risks since the human body is different from a chimpanzee's. When they're taken to the hibernation capsules, the guys secretly bring some cigarettes and a flask before they're successfully put to sleep. Years later, Max and Albert wake up and are taken to a strange white room by a group of women who also bring them breakfast. The food is so hard it can't be bitten, so one of the women teaches them that they're actually containers with a paste that imitates the food inside. The guys complain about the lack of taste but blame it on a side effect of the hibernation. Then Max brings out the cigarettes and flask, sharing them with Albert as a little dessert. However, the smoke immediately triggers an alarm and the women rush in to put it out by covering them with foam. Afterward, a doctor and her assistant Lamia come to check on the guys, who keep asking about the professor. The women explain that the professor doesn't exist and his experiments were abandoned because the world went through another war. Max and Albert are very confused, so the women finally share the details. They slept for 53 years, meaning it's now year 2044. To make matters worse, the war wiped out all men, so Max and Albert are the only ones left. Confused and scared, the duo tries to run away, but the door electrocutes them and knocks them out. When they wake up, Albert concludes this must be the second stage of the experiment and they're testing their reactions to a psychological shock. Max still can't believe that there aren't any more men and wonders how the women reproduce. Since Lamia is keeping an eye on them, she hears this and explains they reproduce through parthenogenesis, which is a real form of asexual reproduction that doesn't require fertilization found in many animals. At that moment, another woman belonging to the faction Genetics enters Lamia's workstation and messes with her things, saying it's a pity Lamia left Genetics to join the faction Archeo. Before leaving, she warns Lamia that the world outside is dangerous and full of radiation, hinting at the harsh reality they now live in. Lamia then tells Max and Albert that they need to adapt to this new world if they want to survive, as the rules have changed drastically. The woman points out that it'd be a better idea to hand the guys over to genetics. Sometime later, the TV in Albert and Max's room is turned on and a girl appears talking about parthenogenesis, so Albert has to explain to Max that the children are created in test tubes. Lamia mentions that their method of procreation is perfect but Max accuses them of brainwashing kids. That night, Max and Albert think about the years of life they've missed and how their family and friends are gone, swearing they'll never get frozen again. They comfort each other and finish the last drops of alcohol. Later, while they watch TV, Max points out that if they do things right this place could be a paradise for them, but Albert scolds him for thinking with his other head in such a serious situation. At that moment, Lamia comes to check on their health and Max answers with a flirty line that Lamia doesn't understand. Then he asks if they could take a walk together or even dance as he comes closer to Lamia, suddenly stealing her first kiss. Lamia freaks out and immediately throws him on the floor before leaving. Once she's alone, Lamia realizes she can't stop thinking about the kiss and something has awakened in her. Eventually, the guys are allowed to leave the room and taken to the bio-sanctuary, where they find embalmed animals that were victims of radiation. They also find a tree with two tiny apples and eat them. At that moment, they're approached by Her Excellency, the leader of this society. When she asks the men's age, genetics member Emma explains the guys are technically 86 but because of the hibernation, they haven't physically aged. Max comes closer to properly introduce himself, but the guards think he's about to attack her and knock him down. Her Excellency tells the guards to let go of Max and teaches the men some history. It was the professor who invented the M-bomb, a chemical that was supposed to temporarily paralyze male genes to stop the war but in the end, it erased them. Max points out he and Albert can take over reproduction now, but none of the women are interested. Her Excellency points at the tree and explains it symbolizes the story of Adam and Eve so women will remember not to lose paradise. She then notices the apples are missing and furiously orders the guards to put the men in confinement. Afterward, Albert tells Max they should escape, theorizing there must be a better world outside. In the meantime, Lamia continues to think about the kiss so she visits the elder, the only person who still remembers the old world. Lamia gives her a jar of strawberry jam to convince her to talk, and the elder shares stories about the role of men in the former society. Lamia can't help admitting there's something fascinating about Max and Albert, causing the elder to point out that Lamia must be falling in love. Then the elder asks what will happen to the guys, so Lamia explains they'll go through naturalization, meaning they'll be operated on to become women. The elder gets angry and says that's worse than death for them, mentioning having men as the last chance for things to go back to normal. Sometime later, Max and Albert are caught spying on a class that is brainwashing the women with lies about the past. Lamia asks them to sign a form so they can authorize the naturalization, but the men refuse. 
Albert also mentions that he won't cooperate unless they're granted freedom. After Lamia leaves, the ceiling suddenly opens and the men discover a huge assembly of women watching them. A discussion begins to decide the guy's future, but instead of a trial, it becomes an argument between the genetics and Archeo factions. Archeo wants to force the men to go through the surgery, while genetics wants to kill them and experiment on them. While the women vote, Max and Albert come up with a plan to escape. They start kissing the guards, and the mix of shock and awakening hormones makes them pass out. By the time Archeo and its surgery idea win by one vote, the duo is already gone. They are wandering around the building, kissing any woman who tries to stop them to knock them out. Eventually, they find an elevator and use it to visit different floors, where they find one weird thing after another. When they reach an area deep underground, they discover a mine shaft plus a few items on the floor like a boot, a bottle of alcohol, and a newspaper from 1993 that mentions the beginning of the war. At that moment, the security team finds them, so the duo runs and escapes through a waste chute. They land in an abandoned area where anarchists live away from the oppressive regime, which allows them to enjoy forbidden things like music, dancing, and woman-on-woman -woman action. Max and Albert dumbly watch two people kiss and get caught by two rebels who think they're government spies, but at the same time, the security team shows up and attacks. Chaos ensues as the rebels panic and the guards don't know who to arrest first, allowing the guys to escape. In the chaos, the men split up but luckily find each other again at the elevator, only to be discovered by Lamia. She offers to take them to see the outside, but Max is suspicious. Albert reminds him this is their only chance, so they agree to follow her to a strange room with a periscope. As the men look through it, it's revealed that women have been living underground because outside is all dark and barren with no chance of getting better anytime soon. Their system always detects at least 300 units of radiation as a side effect of the M-bomb, meaning they can't go outside. However, Max and Albert would rather risk it than live there. Lamia is disappointed when the men refuse to cooperate, feeling torn between her loyalty to her work and her growing empathy for them. She reluctantly alerts security, leading to the men's recapture. Despite Emma and others congratulating her for her role, Lamia feels conflicted and empty, especially when she's asked to hand over her research to genetics. This includes her dissertation about the men, which she had invested much of herself into. Feeling betrayed by her organization, Lamia tosses away the promotion pin she's given. Meanwhile, Albert and Max face a grim fate. They're prepared for a procedure where their organs will be harvested for older women, and the rest of their bodies will be turned into nutritional substances due to a protein shortage. Max is shocked to discover that one of the surgeons is his own daughter now aged and resentful after years of feeling abandoned by him. Before the procedure can begin, the men are left to ponder their choices and the consequences of their actions. Lamia bravely sabotages the surgery and helps the men escape, leading them to the elevator. However, Albert unexpectedly passes out due to the anesthesia he received. He then wakes up in 1994, where he meets the professor who tells him the experiment was a success. Albert shares his dream about a world without men, and Max reveals he had the same dream. The professor dismisses this as impossible, causing Albert to wake up back in the elevator with Max and Lamia. Lamia guides them back to the periscope room, where she coerces the guards to remove their suits. With the suits on, Lamia tries to use the system to send them to the surface, but it requires a password known only to Her Excellency. Frustrated, Max unknowingly blurts out a curse word, which surprisingly turns out to be the password. Lamia decides to join them and also dons a suit. The trio explores the area and discovers a barrier, which they realize is just fabric. They cut through it and find out the truth. The world outside is beautiful and normal, contradicting the bleak image shown on the periscope. They revel in the natural beauty until they realize their suits are running out of oxygen. Max notices a bird flying by, indicating the air is safe. They remove their suits and continue, eventually finding a wall, which they climb over to discover a beautiful house. After settling into the house and enjoying the fresh food, Lamia is surprised by its delicious taste. Meanwhile, in the underground base, Emma decides to take the risk and wears a suit to pursue the group. She eventually locates the house and sees the trio, but she collapses due to her suit losing oxygen. Albert carries her inside the house to help her recover. When Emma regains consciousness, she demands to be taken back to the base and struggles against Albert to escape. Their movements accidentally turn on the TV, which broadcasts a government announcement claiming Lamia and Emma are dead. The broadcast then shows an interview with fake versions of Max and Albert, who falsely claim to be happy as women. This revelation shocks Emma, making her realize she has been brainwashed by her government. Emma agrees to stay with Albert, and Max takes Lamia to a bedroom. Sometime later, Max and Albert hear the sound of an arriving elevator and hide to watch Her Excellency enter the house, which turns out to be hers. When she finds two dirty glasses, she opens the wardrobe and sees Max, so she tries to run away. Albert and Max immediately overpower her, but in the struggle, clothes are ripped, and prosthetics fall. To their shock, Her Excellency turns out to be a man in disguise. 
He explains that he was only four when the war ended and the League of Women took over. The few remaining boys were put through surgery, but his mom hit him to save him. When he grew up, he started wearing a woman's costume and joined the League, eventually becoming their leader. The radiation wasn't as strong as they anticipated, but it was hard to change what a brainwashed crowd was used to. Albert and Max offer a deal, they'll keep this guy's real identity secret, and in exchange, he'll let them live in the house with Lamia and Emma. Her Excellency gladly agrees, admitting he's scared of women. Sometime later, Max and Albert sneak back into the underground base while disguised as female laboratory workers. They add their seed to the flasks in the incubation center, hoping to change the future. Nine months later, a nurse screams when she discovers a baby boy wrapped in blankets. If you want interesting movie recaps, like, share, and subscribe to follow us for more movie recaps.